Hi guys, today I just want to talk to you a little bit about a sign that we're going to be making very shortly and it's just an oak sign that's going to have a simple v carve letters on there and an emblem. This is actually American white oak so we will be finishing it with Osmo oil to protect it um, as it's quite a dry timber. It's 20 mil thick, 120 mil tall and 400 millimeters wide. So what we're going to do, I've already cut it down to size. I'm going to machine a chamfer around the edges and then we're going to put a vinyl mask on. The vinyl mask is like a paint mask so that we stick this to the timber, we machine through the mask and then we spray paint the areas that have been carved that we need to paint, we mask the other areas um, and then when the paint's dry we remove the mask and then we just give it a light sand over the top and then it, it just prevents paint from bleeding into any grain around the edges and hours and hours of sanding. So this is this is the vinyl we use. It's actually we actually do use Aura Mask. This is the Aura Mask 813, which is very good, but it's also quite expensive. So if like me you use a lot of this vinyl paint mask you might want to find a cheap alternative as I did. Now I tried lots of different vinyl masks and this is the one that we came up with, that we stuck with. And this is just a, a normal vinyl that's used for vehicle sign writing. And it's actually called Image Perfect and the number is IP5700. Now this is we get this from the UK. I'm not sure if you can get this anywhere else. I'm sure you can get an equivalent or contact a supplier over here and they may well ship to the States or Canada, Australia, wherever. Wherever you may be. Um, right, so I'll just quickly show you how easy this is just to apply. This is just purely for, for the video. So just peel the backing off. Start at one end. Now I've got one of these. It was only about a pound from Amazon. And this is just to just to help you to smooth the, the vinyl on. So make sure you've not got trapping air in and it's getting a good addition to the timber. And that's that. Simple as that. So then what we do, we set the, set the workpiece up on the machine, on our CNC machine. We carve what we need to carve, and then we run through the process of finishing. And I'll get onto that next. Once we've carved, the areas, I'll seal any areas that I'm going to paint with a clear sealer. It'll have two coats of this, allowing it to dry between coats. Once that's dry, then we use a um, dark green for the finish. And this will have two coats. Once that's done, the whole piece will be lightly sanded down and then finished with Osmo oil. This is great, this stuff. It takes a couple of coats, about 16 hours between coats, but it's UV protection, clear satin. Also, sorry, I just wanted to say, the vinyl that we use is more than half the price of the Aura Mask. Like I say, I'm not taking anything away from Aura Mask because it is fantastic and it works great. But we've made over 200 signs in our workshop using this stuff and we've not had any problems. I'll just show you how easy this is to actually peel the mask off. I will show you once it's carved, the actual finished product. There you go.
Okay, so here's our machine sign, ready for painting. Ignore the fact that the vinyl doesn't go all the way to the end because this half of the sign, this side of the sign, isn't going to be painted. It's just going to be left as a natural wood. It will just be sanded and then that will just be treated with Osmo oil. This is what's going to be painted, the MG emblem. So I'll mask. Obviously, you need to mask the rest around the edges, some on the back and cover the letters because you don't want any spray. If it's windy or if there's a breeze where in our spray, spray tent, then the spray can travel around it and then you find yourself sanding unnecessarily to get any excess spray off of the material. So we mask that, just leaving the MG and then we get to the paint. Okay. Yeah. There you go, all masked up, ready for paint. sign has been machined it's been carved i've even machined the recesses in the back to take my keyhole clamps brackets and i'll show you those in a bit and then i'm just going to take off the masking tape peel the vinyl mask off give it a light sand so that's the masking tape removed as you can see, these recesses on the back. I have to take my keyhole brackets. So once they're screwed in, that allows it to be fixed to the wall. When you're doing smaller bits, it's always handy to have a pair of tweezers. It just helps, especially if you've not got very good fingernails like myself. Then we'll give it a light sand using 240 grit and orbital sander. Now I use these to remove any fine sawdust that's left before painting with the Osmo oil or varnishing or staining. It's just it's called a tack cloth. Can buy them in packs. Just picks up and keeps hold of any sawdust that might be left behind from sanding that you don't want to be spreading around the sign when you're painting it. And there you go. Time to put some oil on it. Right, I've got a nice clean brush and I'm going to be giving it two coats of Osmo oil but we have to wait 16 hours between coats for it to dry sufficiently.
Always go with the grain of the wood. Here's a little tip. Because I want to turn it over to be able to paint the other side. Get yourself a piece of scrap wood. And put four screws, a screw in each corner through the wood. And you can turn the sign over. To paint the top. You can give it a light sand in between coats. If, there's, if it's a slightly rough finish after the first coat, you can either use some zero grade wire wool or some fine sandpaper. Just give it a very light sanding and then that just gives, brings it back to a nice smooth finish. And then you can give it a final coat. Now we're going to fit the keyhole brackets, which are these. And these little plates just fit over the recesses that we machined before. Now a little tip for these. Put one of these, it's only cheap. It's a hinge drill. It's got a sprung loaded, like a sheath on the end of it that pushes back, but it finds the center of the hole. So when you, after you've drilled it, when you put the screws in, it doesn't try and pull the bracket cocked one way or the other. Alright guys, right, this is our sign complete. I do hope you found the content of this video useful. I hope it's answered a lot of questions you may have had. When I first started out in CNC, I had a lot of questions that I wanted answered. I relied quite heavily on the Facebook groups and the like, I asked a lot of questions, got a lot of answers. There are a lot of fantastic people out there willing to help, willing to give their time. This is just my way of giving a little back. Let me know if there's anything I haven't covered that you'd like me to cover in upcoming videos. I'm more than happy to take that on board. And if you've got any criticisms, you know, criticism is healthy. If I'm doing anything differently to how you would do it, or you may do something differently to me, please do tell me. Tell me in the comments. Let me know. This is what it's all about. You learn. You evolve. You know, you, there's not just one way of doing things. This is just the way that works for me. You may do things differently that... I don't know about that I can take on board and use in my work and please do let me know if there's anything you'd like me to cover in upcoming videos like I said look forward to seeing you soon take care don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on your notifications